Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about the various elements of grace and the work of salvation, and today we'll talk about actual grace. What is actual grace, and what does it do? Well, look at a star in the night sky. That star gives off light and heat, and because it is the source of that light and heat, the closer you get to the star, the brighter and hotter the light and heat will be to you. In the same way, God gives off goodness, and the closer you are to God, the more of that goodness you'll receive, as it says in the Bible, But he giveth greater grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Be subject therefore to God, but resist the devil, and he will fly from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. James 4, 6-8a the difference, however, is that unlike a star, God has free will, and is therefore able to give good things to you even if you don't deserve them. And one of the most important good things which God gives, even to those who are far from him, is actual grace. Actual grace is the prompting of God to do good and or avoid evil. It's a temptation to do what's right, which isn't part of us, and is given to us by God to help us find the right path when we're stuck in sin. Every time we desire any good thing, this is a result of God's actual grace acting on us, and most of us experience this actual grace on an almost constant basis, giving us the power to want to help someone in need, or to hold the door for an old woman, or to tell the truth about something we've done. Actual grace is also needed in order for people to have free will, because human beings are not the actual source of good things, only God is. Therefore, whenever we have the option to choose a good thing over a bad thing, or one of a number of good things, or the lesser of two evils, our ability to do so is given to us by God. Without this, we wouldn't even have the ability to choose right over wrong. However, just because God's grace is needed in order to give us the power to choose right, that doesn't mean we aren't actually making the choices. We still make the decision. The situation is like having a choice between a glass of sulfuric acid and a glass of lemonade. The glass of lemonade will be cool and refreshing. The glass of sulfuric acid will most assuredly kill you in a very painful way. However, at first, all you have is the glass of acid. Then God comes along and puts a glass of lemonade on the table, drawing your attention to it and saying, All right, now choose. Some people get the wrong impression about God, thinking that he sets up the whole situation just to use as an ultimatum to hang over our heads. But God didn't decide that we should be unable to support ourselves any more than he decided that he should be the source of all goodness. That's just how things are and have always been. God's main role in all of this has been to offer us a merciful way to escape from suffering and hopelessness. That way starts with actual grace, the prompting of the Holy Spirit to keep away from sin and do good. Next time, we'll examine sanctifying grace to see what role it plays in the salvation of souls. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.